<laughs> okay, wait. He starts doing that puppy dog thing. I think... No? There we go, there we go, there we go. No. No, 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 no. go. Change your expression, damn it. Oh, hey. No. Come on, there we go. No. go. No. Stop pushing on me. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that was so weird. Got to watch his facial expressions. Try and get you that to lucky. work. I wasn't focused. Let's go again. Let's not, shall we? Really? Wait, let's look at it. Let's look them over. Hi. Right. Oh, that's one for the history books. Gold earring. Man, look at the facial hair on this. I'm sorry, I'm just... Looks pretty good. Light stain? No? Cheap clothes. Strong hands. Well, that's his forearm, so. Yellow nails. Ooh, what's that? Sailor's tattoo. Uh, damn it, I don't want to, but okay. I'm ready to try again. Uh, Fine, if you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. But I don't want to. <laughs> all right, maybe this will be easier. go so much easier yes well good for you i reckon you're stronger than you look Here's thank you 10 shillings i'd like those. to buy you a drink good winner as well and later i'll get you some that's lucky good. charms that's the drink. best accent i can do <laughs> You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Oh, uh, you're poor. I kind of took your money. Why do you say poor? You're not working. I'm a harpooner. But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, 
find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. It's not a bad way, though, to get some money to pay for a drink. I'd do it. A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Bold Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger. Mm. We sailed Black to Peter. the Cape of Good Hope. Black Talk about Peter, him, shall we? Say. I've heard rumors about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar, a violent too. Swinging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant, and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. Hmm. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Yeah, let's get him another drink. Me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her, mm. and he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she'd foundered, and they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. Yeah, who was he? And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. I bet it was the, uh, the boy's father, enough. maybe? Aye. Even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. Hmm. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night. Two days before we sighted the Shetland lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. Those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this must stay between us. All right? Oh. Sure, I'm... Who am I going to talk to? Back in a second. Oh, you must be Kazi. I'll be here with my drink. Here it is. Okay, so we just did that. All right. Uh, punt the pouch into. Arn's pocket and determine if the pouch is his. <laughs> Alright. So we did that. Just got back from the restroom, but I've been standing here the entire time. I just wet myself. That's all I did. Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, um... Oh, it is! Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. <coughs> he commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe, if you like, I... I'm done here. It's time to leave. All right. So it was his pouch that was at the crime scene. Here, maybe we can make another... Uh... Oh, yeah. See, look at this. Uh, Patrick Carnes. Patrick Carnes' pouch. Okay, so Kearns has confirmed that the pouch belongs to him. This means he was at the scene of the murder and thus proves his guilt. Carnes has confirmed the pouch belongs to him. This means that he was at the scene of the murder, but does not necessarily prove that he is a murderer. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't think... I mean, to put a harpoon through a man and stick him to the wall, as we saw, it does require a, a good amount of strength, and he's strong. Could Hurtley have done it? Could they both have done it? I'm going to say for now, the pouch proves his, uh, his visit. I'm not going to condemn a man just because we found his pouch there yet. So, I'll go with that. All right, let's get out of here. Um, man, where to next? Didn't really kind of leave me. Here, let me see if this will give me a clue here. Uh, the stock exchange, the CPR. Yeah, where? Where do I need to go next to figure that part out? Would that be somewhere in Holmes's library? I don't think it would be at Scotland Yard. Is there anything else in any of these pages? So that was the conversation I just had. Souvenirs. We haven't finished a case as of yet. Um. All right. Well, let's just head up. Let's actually get out of here. We'll go to Baker Street first and see if there's anything with the new information that we just got from Carnes. There's anything that we can now look at in the library or something. Oh! Done being a sailor. So, back to looking like myself. Uh, letters... My archive. I can... This is where I keep my post. Uh, so my nothing archive. is popping up... I can always consult with it, if needed. ...that uh, I can examine any of this stuff. My analysis table. It is useful no. for my work. No, no, no. Anything over here? No. Okay, so you let's. Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer? I'm not convinced. I'm not sold on it. Is there anything else that I can piece together? Connect to the uh, tin box. Um. Yeah, I thought that might be be something, because they she she said there was no gardener, and then he had his footprints right there. The boots matched the footprints at Woodman's lead, thus proving he was there. Dude, the Karen denies that he was the gardener, but he was a gardener. Ooh, oh, okay, cool. So you link them together, and okay, so Liam Hartley's relationship with Judith Carey gives him a motive for killing Peter Carey. It does. I would agree with that. So that's cool. As you make deductions, they will form together to its... Okay, cool. So it's like building a tree. That's awesome. All right. So if we've made that, uh, is there any other deductions that we can put together? Um, Liam Hurtley's letter... Does it have anything to do with her confession. Okay. It has been confirmed that Liam Hartley was flirting with Peter Carey's wife and even fell in love. But it didn't go beyond the uh, affectionate but harmless letters and words. Liam Hartley loved Judith Carey so desperately that his jealousy could have provoked him into committing murder. Hmm. Oh god, this seems like definitely more of a 50-50. This isn't lopsided. Either it was just harmless flirting or desperate jealousy. God, he hasn't given me enough on this for me to deduce anything yet. Yeah, I'm not comfortable making a call on that one. Let's see if we can go actually go back to Scotland Yard and confront Hurtley with any of this new information. I mean, we haven't talked to him, actually, since um, the wife uh, confirmed that there was something there, whether, you know, love or something more, or just harmless flirting. So let's see how he reacts to this when we bring this up. I'm not saying another word. 
I'm not saying what? another word. So I can't bring him in there. Okay. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. All right. So, oddly enough, I can't confront him then? I... Hmm. Well, let's see here. Let's see if, uh, what happens when I go in here and talk. Shapes of noses. Okay. How is the investigation going, Mr. Holmes? Do you have any idea who the murderer is yet? Okay. Well... We did mention that it could be a two-man job to harpoon a man to a wall, through him, and then peg him up against a wall like that. Uh, clearly, the sailor had already a problem with him. He thought he was like the worst man in the world. But what would link him to actually be there to kill him? Like, I can't think of anything. And so... It seems like he saw him possibly murder somebody, but then why many, like, why would then he lead to murder him later? Okay, I'm gonna go on a limb here because I don't see the sailor having a reason. God, this is hard. Well, it says that his jealousy could have provoked him into committing murder, so it's not like we're saying he is the murderer, but so I'm gonna go with that. Ooh. Two pairs of testicles. Liam Hartley's relationship with Judas Carey gives him a motive for killing Peter Carey. It does. His presence at Women's Lee on the night of the murder is explained by his affection towards Judith Carey and the fact that he worked there as a gardener. Uh, I'm torn. I really don't know. I wish I could uh, question Hartley one more time with the new information that I have, but it's not letting me. And so it could either be that gives him motive for killing Peter Carey or Hurtley's innocence. And frankly, it could go either way. So I I mean, he's being really closed-lipped on everything. And so I'm going to go along with this. I'm going to say it does give him motive for killing Peter Carey. Okay. So, just did that. Now can How I... How is the investigation going, Mr. Holmes? Do you have any idea who the murderer is yet? Okay, so I can't just outright just go up to him and say, like, this is the man, this is the murderer. Um, again. These are the suspect's belongings. Examined, examined... Oh, okay, there you go. That's the certificate. That's what I can compare it to. These are connected. Brilliant. Awesome. Canadian Pacific Railway. That's all I get from that. CPR. Oh, look, CPR. Now we have the proof that Nelligan's papers were indeed here. It seems that they have vanished, however. What could that mean? So, before I can draw a conclusion, a piece of the stock exchange certificate belongs. It was found inside the scene record ship's logs. The pages had been torn out. Okay, so what kind of conclusion can I draw from this? Would the missing papers be connected to the missing tin box? Valuable bond certificates were kept inside the stolen tin box. Curious. Wait a second. Um, what is then the conclusion? John Nelgen could have been caught stealing the bond certificates. This might have been a motive for him to murder Peter Carey. Good God. So I'm curious. Oh, wait. Okay. And then it leads to another drawn conclusion. Both Nelgen and Hurley and Hurtley are lying, therefore they might be working together. But then that puts the uh, sailor completely out of the picture then, it seems. Unless they were all three holding the harpoon together, which would be quite weird. God, and here, like, I'm kind of thinking like the kid might be innocent. Two murderers. I did suspect there might have been two murderers in the first place. And I don't 
think it's a sailor. I really don't, because he didn't, I mean, I hate to say, like, it didn't seem like the type or something like that, but, I mean, he did see, you know, our victim a while ago kill somebody, you know, murder them, and he didn't say he was the worst, but he never said that the murder victim, like, did anything bad necessarily towards him. He was just grumpy and, and mean. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna say there was two murderers, and, yeah, it's both the kid and this guy. Liam Hurley and John Miller are guilty of a heinous, predetermined crime. Let them be punished by law. No one was the initiator, and Hurley, his accomplice. Liam Hurley and John Miller are guilty of a heinous crime. Let them be punished by the law. Hurtley was the initiator, and poor Nogan was just following his lead. Ooh, guys. All right, what do you think? Okay, but here's then the thing that I'm putting out towards chat. Do you think the boy was the initiator, or Hurtley was the initiator? Do you think the boy, whose father was uh, killed by the victim... Now, we only found this out through the sailor... Uh, and there is the possibility of bear bonds, you know, in the mix. Because remember, he did come from a rich family, but then he was made poor. Or do you think Hurtley is the initiator? Where uh, it was, he was just such in love with his wife that, uh, you know, it's what drew drew him to, to murder the victim. And uh, Nelgen was just brought in, in the end. You know, as odd as it sounds... I almost think Nelgan is the initiator. But, see, that would make sense, because once again, harpooning a dude to the wall. <laughs> oh, if we're wrong, we're all going to hell. You're coming with me.